I have been giving golf lessons for 30 years, tens of thousands of students in lessons. I see the same mistakes over and over and over again. I call them fatal flaws. I'm going to show you the most common ones I see, and I'm going to show you how to fix them. The first fatal flaw that I see the most often, especially with higher handicapped men, it's called being across the line at the top of the backswing. So if, if the target line is this alignment stick on the mat here, whenever I'm parallel to the ground, I should be parallel to the target line. So my backswing position correctly is back here somewhere. And what I see far too many players, they get the club across the line and then the shaft and the head actually points to the right. The reason why this is such a terrible position is from this position here, if I come, my downswing should start like this, you can see how steep the shaft is. So that's a steep position when you're across the line. This would be a laid off position and it would be flat as I come down, but this across the line at the top gets a player much too steep and so then they either go this way and they hit it low left or top it, or they let it fall behind them and their hips go this way and they block it to the right. So the number one fatal flaw is by being across the line at the top. One of the things I like to do is in a mirror, and you can kind of see this shadow on the wall here with my projector, is that if I get back to the top, my hands and the club head should be in the same spot. If I get across the line, you'll see that the head's way over the top of my head here in this position rather than back here. So I can get in a mirror or, or, or in a shadow like this and I can try to match up the club head and my hands in the same place on this way back. Um, you can also check on video. If you have the camera in the correct position, you ought to be able to see that position at the top. You rarely see a tour player that's across the line at the top. You'll see them laid off, Sergio, John Rahm, um, Ricky Fowler. Um, but uh, fatal flaw number one, cross the line at the top. Fatal flaw number two, inside flat takeaways. Um, I've talked about this in quite a few videos before. Um, parallel to the ground, parallel to the target line, or slightly steeper than that is where you will find most low handicap or professional players. Anything lower than that, if I'm parallel to the ground and the club's back here, um, if I swing forward from this position, the club's going to swing too much to the right, but I'm also going to have a tough time reaching the ball. I'm probably going to top it. So once I'm in this position, I've got to go that way to get back to the ball. So fatal flaw number two is an improper takeaway. One of my favorite drills that's helped Patrick so much is to have your top hand over on this side of the shaft at a dress. And these are just practice swings, but I can turn and you can see that the path of that club is going to be perfect. When players are too much inside, they are rolling with their hands and they get back in this position. So fatal flaw number two, improper takeaway and more specifically an inside takeaway. You can play from a too steep position, very difficult for most players to overcome an inside takeaway. Fatal flaw number three, this one drives me crazy, and whenever I see it on video, um, it's usually the first one or two things I'll address with a player. Fatal flaw number three is called a chicken wing on the follow through. And what I mean by that is, as a right-handed player, if I see this arm on video at impact or after impact where I can see a space here, you can see what that does to the club face. Chicken wings cause open club faces at impact 
the club will get behind you and you will hit big power slices. And so if you're a slicer, have somebody video you. And if you see this position after impact where you have all this space here, you're a chicken winger and there's nothing worse. The way this left arm's supposed to work is it's supposed to rotate as we go through. And you can see in this position, no space, it's tucked in. One of the things I tell players is we're trying to swing the club head in a circle around us. And our backswing and our follow through should be pretty symmetrical. And here's what I mean. If I go back on my backswing and I stop right here, my left arm is straight, but my right arm is folded, okay? And so if I, a chicken wing on the way through, that would be like this. So my right arm's never like this on the way back. And you can see now on, as I swing forward, my right arm gets pretty straight, but this lead arm should fold just like the trail arm did on the back swing. If I do a parallel to the ground swing, you can see that arm folds, and you can see on the way through, this arm folds. So for you chicken wingers out there, this is one of the best drills you can do is to turn with your body and swing this club parallel to the ground and feel what your elbows do. One of the old tricks was to take one of your golf gloves and put it under this arm too and keep it in as you swing through so it doesn't drop. That's not a bad feeling either I don't recommend hitting balls like that though because I think it restricts your backswing too much and at some point on the follow through these arms should come up and that should fall out. So if you're a really bad chicken winger, putting a glove under here, taking practice swings, keeping it in, is a pretty good way to do it. I think learning how to use your hands correctly and your elbows correctly is probably the secret to golf for most players that are high handicappers. Before I move on to the next one, uh, Patrick reminded me of one thing I showed him. Also, if you're a chicken winger, um, I like holding on with your lead arm and then with this trail arm, just hold on to your tricep back here. And as you swing through, um, just keep that arm on that, that hand on that arm and you'll feel that fold. And that's another great drill to, to work on your chicken wing. The next fatal flaw is called a reverse pivot. And um, you don't see it very often with really good players, but boy, again, higher handicappers that are shooting 95 plus, I see it all the time. The correct pivot um, should be on my backswing that my, most of my weight should be in my trail hip, my right hip for a right hander. Um, I should actually be able to lift this foot off the ground pretty easily if my weight is transferred correctly at this point on the backswing. Um, really good players is the club will get keep going back might actually start to shift left before they get to the top of the backswing. So I kind of like to check this position to where when my when my lead arm's parallel to the ground and I can feel this weight in my back hip. And then as I would swing forward and I would duplicate this position here with my trail arm parallel. I should be able to feel 80, 90% of my weight in my front hip. Another good way to practice it if you think, so a reverse pivot does the opposite. The, all the weight goes on the left side as a player goes back. You can see that tilts my head and my shoulders towards the target. And then as I come down, my weight goes to my back foot. And then I'll usually spin out like this after I hit the ball because all my weight's on my trail leg. So this way, this way is a pretty terrible way to play golf or any sport for that matter. 
And what happens is it's really a backswing mistake. Um, and so when this weight goes this way on my backswing, to go forward, it has to go somewhere. Well, it's already here, so it's got to go backwards. The way to fix it is if I'm here on the way back, now it's got to go somewhere as well, but it's all here, so now it's got to go forward. So very learning how the correct motion with your footwork and your weight distribution is a big part of being consistent and generating speed. A really good drill for that is pick up this foot, put it down, pick up that foot. And we can just make swings where back foot, front foot, and learn to keep your balance on each leg. Pretty good, pretty good fundamental way to do it. The other way is to make a throwing motion, pretending you're throwing sidearm. And you'll see your weight goes here, your weight goes forward. Um, one arm swings where you're making a sidearm throwing motion is a really good way to work on your footwork. The next fatal flaw, I've kind of lost count. Patrick will tell you what number we're on. But uh, the next fatal flaw I see, I call it improper swing sequence. Okay? And what I mean by that is this. The correct sequence in the golf swing for a full swing, it's different short game, this is full swing, is... I go around and then up and then I go down and then around. And so I'll say that again. I go around and then up and then I go down and then around. That is the correct sequence for the golf swing. What most new players, they do it the exact opposite. They go up and then around and then they go around and then down. And you can see how terrible a path that is, but the sequence is off. And so even if you took a pitching wedge or a short iron and you just practice going around and then up and then down and then around in about half speed swings, you'll get the hang of it. Understanding that correct sequence um, is very important in learning to play good golf. The other fatal flaw that I see with most players that come to see me, and I'll have to say I'm a lot pickier on this than I used to be. I, I'm still pretty much with most players try to get them to focus on the club and how the club swings correctly. Um, but posture is really, really important. How you set up in a posture can make or break you as a player. And here's what I mean. Golf inherently is a difficult sport. We stand on two legs upright. That makes it very easy to swing a bat or something at waist high and hit something. But very rarely do we swing it at a golf ball when it's waist high. You might on rare occasion on a Pete Dye golf course be on some little mogul that you're that way. But for the most part, the ball is going to be on the ground below us. And so that makes it very awkward for our body, which stands upright, to hit the ball. If, you ever, if you're a baseball fan, if you really pay attention, most pitches are low and outside. And they're low and outside on purpose because that's the hardest place for a batter to hit a baseball too. And so if a pitcher can get the umpire to call strikes low and outside, Greg Maddox was famous for that, by the way, with the Braves. I'm a Cardinal fan. So they gave him the, about six inches outside and six inches low, and nobody could beat him. But that's off the subject. But that, that, that illustrates my point, is that it's very difficult to hit a low outside pitch. Well, we're swinging at low outside pitches in golf every, every swing. So... From a posture point of view, what the fatal flaw is, 
is to be too upright with your spine angle where it's too vertical. And so, and so I see this with new players especially, but even accomplished players occasionally. They're very upright and then they squat with their knees like this to lower down to the ball. And at that angle, it makes my shoulders turn horizontal to the ground. It makes it very difficult to get the club up and down on the ball correctly. So the correct posture is we bend from the hips and then our spine angle is such that we tilt like this and now my shoulders when they turn are on a plane like this and it makes it much easier to get the club head up and down on the ball. So fatal flaw for sure is poor posture, too vertical a spine angle at address. The other thing that happens when I stand upright and squat down is I'm always too close to the ball too. So as you know from many of my other videos, I think distance away is really important that uh, I can measure with the club to the top of my knee or I can measure like this to my belt buckle. And you can see from that position, I'm gonna be on a much tilted, more tilted spine angle then I am going to be like this. And once I get in this position, pretty easy to block it to the right or then to come over the top. I have to figure out how to get the club head on the ball. And from an improper posture, I either got to go this way to try to hit it or I got to go that way to try to hit it. And both of them are lousy. The final fatal flaw, try saying that fast that I'm going to talk about today is trying to have a high finish. I think too many people have the misconception that on the follow through that the club head is supposed to go right straight to the target and that my hands have to go as high as I can finish. Um, they watch tour players that are in their, a lot of them in their early 20s, late 20s that are very flexible. And by the time they end up on their follow through, they're very high finish. But if you really watch in slow motion, as their club head swings forward, it swings in a circle around them and they're in this position after they hit the ball. And so the mistake I see is people try to finish high through the ball. If you wanna hit a slice on purpose, that's the way to do it, is to finish high. And so all you slicers out there that are trying to finish as high as you can with the club head through the ball, and you wonder why you hit it out of bounds three or four times to the right every time you play, it's because you've got a too high finish. This club head swings from this back swing here around us in a circle over here. And you'll see every tour player will do that. You might find a swing occasionally where they're higher than that, but it's because they're trying to hit a slice on purpose. 